who wouldn't be interested in a Dracula movie directed by Francis Ford Coppola that attempts to return to the novel to the point where it's even called Bram Stoker's Dracula. In addition, the movie explores the historical basis for the character, starting with a prologue involving Vlad the Impaler fending off an invasion of Turks. When his wife commits suicide after hearing a false account of his death, Vlad forsakes God and vows to rise from his own death, becoming the vampire Count Dracula. Centuries later, he's visited in his castle by Jonathan Harker, who assists him in purchasing a house in London. Becoming smitten with Harker's fiancée Mina, Dracula begins a new reign of supernatural terror in London, prompting the intervention of Professor Van Helsing, who works to save Mina from the Count's grasp. When I first saw this film, I had a very negative reaction to it, which changed somewhat after reading the book. Narratively, the movie does follow Stoker's novel very closely. However, this doesn't change the fact that it is overblown and overproduced to an extent. Much of the time, the style that Coppola and company present here seems to outshine the material. The lavish production and style are sometimes overproduced, to the point where they overshadow the story and script, which is what is supposed to carry the movie. As a result, many aspects are surprisingly over the top, with the performances reflecting the theatrical approach. Gary Oldman constantly chews the scenery as Dracula, savoring every sneering articulation and guttural noise that he implements. Bella Lugosi wasn't this over the top, and he played the role in 1931. In spite of this, the brand of overacting that Oldman employs admittedly leans more toward throwing himself completely into the role rather than poking fun. Part of the reasoning behind his performance may lie in the costume design, which is just cartoonish. Everyone else in the film is dressed relatively normal for a period piece, but then you see Dracula walking around with a bright red robe and what look like someone's family jewels on his head. Later, he seems to dress up like Johnny Depp when traversing the city. Did he really need to look this jarringly goofy? Then you have Keanu Reeves as Harker. Whether or not you think that Reeves has any range, it's hard to deny that he is blatantly miscast. It's not just that he puts on one of the phoniest British accents in film history, which by itself would not be a deal breaker, but he looks entirely out of place and gives an exceedingly bland performance. The reason that it bothers me so much is that every other character is well cast and well acted. Anthony Hopkins capably balances stern duty and empathy as Van Helsing, even if he never quite matches Peter Cushing. Winona Ryder finds a nice mix between the intelligence and vulnerability of Mina. Carrie Elways perfectly conveys the devotion and sense of powerlessness of Arthur Holmwood. Tom Waits easily channels the feral insanity of Renfield. Sadie Frost oozes confidence as Lucy, and Richard E. Grant and Bill Campbell are straight out of the novel as the concerned Dr. Seward and loyal Texan Quincy Morris, respectively. In spite of the accomplished performances, there is an overriding theatricality that is both distracting and oddly appealing, if that makes any sense. From the first frame, the audience is thrown into a stylized world that seems like something out of a stage play, a feeling that is strengthened by nearly every scene taking place on a set. Although this makes the film feel claustrophobic at times, the scenes themselves, specifically those involving the supernatural, are directed with an intriguing visual flair. Further aid comes from the intense musical score by Wojciech Kilar. In addition, the changes from the book make narrative sense. Mina resembling Vlad's wife is a good way of giving a character-driven reason for Dracula to pursue her, in spite of the historical inaccuracies. Bram Stoker's Dracula possesses occasionally hammy deliveries and an overwhelmingly theatrical style that work to the film's detriment and render it inferior to past iterations, such as Horror of Dracula, but the passionate performances, gleefully flamboyant direction, and admirably high production values help this movie put a unique stamp on the vampire story.